Hi, I'm Susan Chavinsky with Morningstar. When investors construct portfolios, they intentionally diversify by asset class, by investment style, and by market capitalization as a way to reduce risk. But investors concerned about risk shouldn't forget to diversify by sector, too. Here today to discuss why sector considerations are important when portfolio building is Dan Lefkowitz. Dan is a strategist with Morningstar Indexes. Good to see you, Dan. Always great to be with you, Susan. So, Dan, you recently wrote a new paper that viewers will be able to access through a link in the transcript of this video uh, about sector allocations and sector risk. And um, your research illustrates that really sector performance can be a significant driver of a portfolio's overall returns. Um, and that was especially true in 2022 and 2023. So let's delve into that, starting really with the performance of the technology sector in those two years and sort of its impact on per portfolio performance. Yeah, it was really a dramatic turnaround. In 2022, of course, the overall uh, equity market was down and tech stocks were hit especially hard uh, compared to defensive sectors um, and the broader market. Um, our technology sector index lost uh, over 30% in 2022. In 2023, there was a rebound um, and our sector index was actually up nearly 60% um, last year. The catalyst was artificial intelligence. So so we had the launch of ChatGPT in late 2022, and that really built a lot of investor enthusiasm for potentially transformative new technology. So we had NVIDIA, other semiconductor stocks, um, Soar uh, in 2023, Microsoft was another perceived beneficiary. So if you were underweight technology in 2023, if you had below market exposure to tech stocks, uh, that was a major hurdle to overcome. You probably underperformed the broad uh, market. So sector allocation really matters. And just building on what you, you said about technology, you know, your research points out that the tech te technology sector now represents the highest percentage in the Morningstar U.S. market index that it's represented since 2000. And I think the number was around 29%. So, what does that mean for investors? Yeah, well, it means that investors who are holding a uh, market portfolio, maybe an ETF that's tracking a mm -hmm. broad market benchmark of U.S. equities, have really outsized exposure to a single sector of the economy. We were saying that tech was a big part of the market in 2020. In 2021, it has now surpassed the level it was at uh, in those years. And that's not even including some tech stocks or techie adjacent stocks mm -hmm. like Meta and Alphabet that a lot of investors might think of as technology, those got reclassified a few years ago to the communication services sector. Then you've got Amazon and Tesla in the consumer cyclical sector. Um, tech has been far and away the best performing sector of the economy going back 10, uh, 15 years even. We've seen a lot of the dreams of the 1990s realized in terms of e-commerce, mobile computing, the cloud. Uh, more recently, of course, we've had AI, cybersecurity. There's no doubt that these trends are, are real and there's a lot of innovation in the technology sector. What there is doubt about, I think, is asset prices and how much is already being discounted. So let's talk about sort of the, the opposite uh, scenario with energy um, in 2022 and then in 2023. Um, and again, you know, is there any really sector risk there right now, considering it probably doesn't take up quite as much of a broad market index as tech does? Right. So energy sort of flip-flopped the other way between 2022 and 2023. In 2022, of course, uh, we had the Russia invasion of Ukraine. We had uh, supply-demand imbalances in the energy sector that sent oil prices uh, soaring. Uh, the energy sector was by far the best performing section of the uh, equity market in 2022. Our energy sector index was up over 60% that year, even as the broad market was down. In 2023, those effects moderated and energy was basically flat. Uh, in terms of energy's market share, it's actually gone the opposite direction as technology. So if you look, 2008, uh, energy was about 15% of the U.S. equity market. Now it's about 4%. Wow. Wow. That's quite a quite a change. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about you know sector uh, leadership change. You know if, if it can change so much from year to year as tech and energy just showed us for the past two years, how should investors really then be thinking about sector allocations as they're building or rebalancing a portfolio? Yeah, I think sector is a big driver of investment returns. You mentioned earlier investment style mm -hmm. and market capitalization size, uh, geographic exposure. It's a risk factor that I think investors need. To 
to pay attention to um, as they're building their portfolio. So we said that you know if you have a market portfolio of U.S. equities, you've got about 30% uh, in mm-hmm. technology. Mm-hmm. If you have a growth bias to your portfolio, you have even more technology, most likely. Now, on the other side, if you have a value tilt, uh, if, you, if you're heavy on dividends, you have less technology. If you're diversified internationally, you have more sector diversification there. So it's something to be aware of. Got it. So let's say an investor would like to perhaps lean into a particular sector today, or maybe an investor practices some sort of sector rotation strategy. Um, What sectors today look particularly attractive? Yeah, so there are different ways to do this. Uh, There are sector rotation strategies that uh, try to align uh, sector allocations with the business cycle, Mm -hmm. macroeconomic uh, factors. So, you know, if there's a downturn, you'd want to be more defensive. If there's going to be a recovery, you want to be in more economically sensitive sectors. Uh, Another way to do this, another approach is to use valuation. Mm -hmm. It's going to be longer term uh, in its orientation. Mm -hmm. We've got our Morningstar equity analysts who are assigning um, fair value estimates to hundreds of companies across economic sector. If you roll those up to the sector level, kind of get a view of where um, sector valuation is at the market level. And um, in aggregate, uh, we're currently seeing at the beginning of 2024 uh, financial services with upside, so trading at an aggregate discount to intrinsic Mm -hmm. value. Um, the energy sector, utilities, healthcare, all with upside. Now, it might take years for that upside mm-hmm. to be realized. That's not necessarily a short-term signal or for 2024. But if you're patient, uh, we're seeing um, valuation opportunities there. Got it. Um, and then conversely, which sectors might show have less appeal today? I'm assuming technology being one of them. Yeah, you, given yeah. our conversation, you wouldn't be surprised to hear that in aggregate, our, our analysts are seeing the technology sector as overvalued after its big rebound in 2023, after its big run up. We did see it as undervalued going into 2023, mm-hmm. but at this point, we think at the sector level, um, the upside has been realized and there's now uh, overvaluation in the technology sector. But you can still drill down at the company level, mm-hmm. there are uh, there's always going to be dispersion. You can still find upper, uh, undervalued opportunities with individual technology stocks. Got it. Well, Dan, thanks for your time today. This is sort of one of those overlooked risks in a portfolio. So you have some really great research shedding light on what investors can be looking for with that. Thanks so much for having me, Susan. I'm Susan Jabinski with Morningstar. Thanks for tuning in.